Good morning, and you're absolutely right. Beautiful day, uh, very calm seas, uh, and my intelligence is that so far, 11 dinghies have been apprehended and brought into Dover already this morning. Well, given, you know, on average, there's a dozen to 15 people on most of them, you can see we're already well over 100 people that have come in so far today. And just get a handle on this, because one of the reasons that I went out a couple of months ago to expose this is the pace is increasing. In 2018, 300 people came via that route. In 2019, just under 2,000 came via that route. We are on course, Mike, this year for 7,500. And what I was trying to do was to alert people to it. Yes, and incredibly, Nigel, you have alerted everybody to it. And yet, um, aside from talk radio, hardly anybody else is paying any attention to it. Yeah, well, I'm afraid there is um, across mainstream media um, a view that things like illegal immigration can't be discussed because if you even debate it, you know, a finger will get pointed at you and you'll be accused of racism and xenophobia and goodness knows what else. Uh, when actually what we're talking about here is, you know, properly controlling our borders, protecting ourselves uh, from importing more COVID-19 and... And here's the real kicker. You know, over the course of the last month, we have seen two horrible, murderous attacks carried out by people who have failed asylum seekers. If you haven't got a clue where these young men come from, you're potentially putting yourself in a security uh, difficulty as well. And yet, as you say, mainstream media will not talk about it, which is why the Ofcom report that has come out this morning shows that public trust in the BBC and other organisations is literally collapsing. Yes, and it's hardly surprising. I mean, I have, have said this many times this year. Uh, I never thought I would be so ashamed of my uh, media colleagues as I now find myself to be, because it quite frankly is appalling the way that stories are reported, the way that stories are not reported, uh, and the way that language is used to kind of pretend that something is happening when it clearly isn't. Yeah, I mean, you know, Pretty Patel keeps making tough statements. Um, if any of your listeners choose to write to the Home Office to ask for an explanation of what's going on on the channel, uh, they will get the sort of bog standard reply that we uh, are, are working in close cooperation with the French authorities, uh, that we do actually deport people. Uh, you know, it, it just is nonsensical. And I, I kind of wonder, because I know that Pretty Patel herself would like to get tough on this. I just feel that she's part of a conservative government and cabinet uh, that aren't really very conservative and don't have the will to do anything about it. Remember, Australia faced this 10 years ago. Australia ended the problem. Uh, but it's not just, I mean, I think, you know, the vast majority of people who hear about these, and when I say young men, you know, bear in mind that over 80% of those that are coming in through Dover are young males between the ages of 18 and 26 coming from all over the world. Uh, in many cases, they have no documentation, so it's difficult for us to know really who they actually are. But if people are angry about that, let me promise you something, they'll be even angrier when they find out later on today exactly where these people go, how many of them there are, and what the cost of the British taxpayer is. Well, this is what I wanted to ask you about, because you put a tweet out this morning basically saying, where do all the illegal migrants that come into Dover go? Yesterday, I went to find out. Now, without wishing to uh, to sort of, you know, give away too much, uh, if you want to release it later on, what can you tell us? Uh, yeah, I can tell you that at 4.30 on my social media, you will see a video, uh, and this is me, uh, in response to my, to, to, to my films in the channel, a lot of members of the public emailed in to say, something really fun is happening to our local hotel. Uh, it appears to be full. Uh, and one of the reports I got uh, was from Bromsgrove in Worcestershire, mm -hmm. in the West Midlands. Um, and I was told that the Hilton Hotel Bromsgrove was now full with 147 young men, um, asylum seekers, illegal migrants, you can choose the phrase which you prefer. So I went up yesterday uh, to Bromsgrove to investigate this. Um, and I walked through the front door um, and asked whether I could book a room. I was told, no, we're closed. Oh, yeah. 
I said, but you can't be closed. I can see lots of people milling about. No, we're closed. And if you go onto the website um, of the uh, Bromsgrove Hilton, you'll find their book for the rest of the year. And the reason is that the government uh, have taken over the hotel. They've given the contract uh, to a big company called Serco. Uh, and we are now, and just get ready for this, we are now in hotels and private accommodation, we are currently housing 48,000 people who have illegally come into the United Kingdom uh, who are waiting uh, for a very long period of time to have their uh, asylum claims dealt with, even if their asylum claims are rejected, which in most cases they will be, they still won't be forced to leave the United Kingdom. So we're putting people up in four star hotels, uh, giving them food, uh, giving them 40 pounds a week spending money, free health care, free dental care. And, you know, Mike, the estimated cost of this over the next 10 years and the contracts that have been given out to these big companies, it's four billion sterling. All right. I mean, that is a vast sum of money. And that estimate was made before the increase in numbers that are coming in this year. So it's going to be even bigger than mm. that. And, and, and that's extraordinary. You know, that is absolutely it, extraordinary, Nigel. I'm not quite it sure. It is extraordinary. I think I think I'm nobody. going to ask you to repeat the numbers again because I think people are going to be listening to this going, actually I can't believe my ears. Forty eight thousand yeah, well, people. They, I tell you what they can't believe, and that is that nobody, and I mean nobody, in our national broadcasters, in our national newspapers, has done anything about this story. They all think it's too difficult, too awkward too embarrassing. So the figures are, we are currently housing in hotels and private houses, 48,000 people, over 80% of whom are young men between the ages of 18 and 26. And the estimated cost of this for the next 10 years is four billion pounds. And that is an underestimate. And of course, you know, the other side of this story and it was revealed a little bit, I think, in Leicester the other week and with some of the fruit uh, picking farms, yeah. is that once they, once they get rejected, because they're not refugees, they're not, you know, under the 1951, you know, Geneva Convention definition of refugees, very few of these people qualify. When they're rejected, they stay in the country and then go into effectively the slave economy, which we know is booming yeah. in many parts of this country. And, you know, frankly, a lot of our big employers are totally unscrupulous about this. You know, we should be hanging our heads in shame yeah. that this kind of thing is going on in modern day Britain. Well, all you've got to do uh, to, 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 to sort of double uh, check all of that that you've just told us is look at what happened in Glasgow um, just a few weeks ago, uh, where a hotel, which was full of asylum seekers, right in the centre of Glasgow, I think it was in Bath Street, which I know well, um, yeah. and there was, uh, you know, a guy went berserk with a, with a knife and stabbed a police officer and tried to stab many other people, um, and it turned out that the entire hotel was full of asylum seekers. Yeah, I mean, look, we must be slightly careful. Uh, you know, not every single person that comes in to the country, uh, you know, is going to behave badly. But, but, you know, when we saw this in 2015 across the Mediterranean, do you remember the very large numbers crossing the Mediterranean? Yeah. Um, and when Mr. Juncker, um, on behalf of the European Union, basically said anyone that sets foot on EU soil will be allowed to stay. You know, when that happened, ISIS publicly said, we will use this route to get our operatives into London. And here's a very sobering thought of the eight men that committed those appalling barbarities in paris just a few years back five of them had got into france by crossing the mediterranean on small boats mm. so there is a very real security issue here and the first duty of the british government should be to protect its people and we're not mike 
We're not having that debate and we should be. Yes, exactly. Because quite frankly, and I'm certainly not suggesting that, that all of these people could be a danger, no. but at the very least, they need to be tested for COVID-19 because it makes a complete mockery of an already <laughs> shambolic oh. kind of idea of quarantine. Last time you and I yes. spoke, I think, about this, I said the only way to get onto the beach at Hastings is to arrive illegally from France because everybody else yeah, was oh, told absolutely. that the beaches were closed, right? But if people are being told when they come back from a perfectly safe place like the Canary, Islands uh, that they have to quarantine for, for 14 days and yet a thousand people you say are arriving today who won't have to quarantine no, at no, all. no 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 not a thousand I'm saying I'm saying well over a hundred today yeah. so just 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 be clear about that but you know there was a a, a a boat taken into Malta earlier this week with 85 people on board and the Maltese authorities tested them for COVID-19 and 65 of them tested positive good so there are real yes um, and more broadly, I mean, you know, your point um, about quarantine and all the rest of it, you know, if we were testing people at airports, if we had an effective test and trace scheme, and don't forget, Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock told us it would be a world beating test and trace regime. If we had that, we wouldn't need to quarantine anybody. We will make America great again.